Welcome to the STEM Space at Home, a series of engineering design challenges for all ages that you can do right at home. I'm Claire, an aerospace engineer, and your captain for today's challenge, building your own pirate ship. Now, do you know what the world's largest sailboat is? Is it smaller than, equal to, or greater than an American football field in length? The answer is greater than, coming in at 439 feet in length, the five-masted 42-sail Royal Clipper is the largest fully rigged sailing ship in the world. It also can accommodate 227 people for a week-long cruise. Today, you will have the chance to build your own pirate ship that can sail the open sea, or at least your bathtub. Let's dive in. There aren't many people boating or swimming right now in the lake behind me, but during the summer months, it can get pretty crowded. Do you like to go swimming? Or maybe have you been in a boat or done other water sports like skiing or tubing? Have you ever swum in the ocean or maybe you like to swim in a pool? It's pretty amazing how people can float on their backs in the water. Have you ever tried that? Maybe even in your bathtub? And even giant boats that weigh a whole lot can also float on top of the water. How does that happen? What well, all has to do with something called buoyancy. Let's find out more. So what is buoyancy? Buoyancy relates to the relationship between the weight of an object, let's say a boat, and its volume. When you put a boat into the water, it effectively makes a hole in the water and pushes away or displaces the water that would have otherwise filled that hole. If the boat weighs more than the water that it displaces, the boat will sink. But if the boat weighs less than the water it displaces, then there is something called a buoyancy force created by the water surrounding that boat that will push up on it. And if that buoyancy force is greater than the force of gravity from the weight of the boat, the boat will float. This concept is known as the Archimedes Principle, named after the Greek mathematician, physicist, and inventor Archimedes who discovered it. Now I'm gonna show you how the Archimedes Principle works. So I have here the ocean, we'll pretend that, and this container is going to be a boat, and this rock is Archimedes. Now, when I put water in this jar, I call it the ocean, I'm gonna mark what the water level is. I want you to see how much water is displaced or pushed away when I put this boat in. Mm, can't really tell that anything moved. Now I'm going to put Archimedes in my boat. Did the water move? So you can see that water has been displaced by adding Archimedes to the boat. I'm going to mark that. So there's the new water level. Now I'm going to take Archimedes out of the boat and have him jump into the ocean. Did the water level change? It did. It went back down to where it was before. Why did that happen? The same things are in the water, but when Archimedes jumped out of the boat, the water level changed again. So what happened when Archimedes was in the boat, there was a large volume of water being displaced. But when he jumped into the water, there was a smaller volume of water being displaced by his body, and he weighs a lot more than the amount of water that he was displacing. So he sunk. When he was in the boat, larger volume of water being displaced, less weight than the water that he was displacing, so it floated. So now it's your turn to experiment with buoyancy with your first engineering design challenge.
Well, that pirate ship wasn't very impressive. It appeared to be taking on a lot of water. I think you can design a better one. For today's challenge, you'll become marine engineers or naval architects. Marine engineers and naval architects design and build ships like aircraft carriers, submarines, and sailboats. Marine engineers work on the mechanical systems like propulsion and steering, while naval architects work on the design and form stability of a boat. Engineers like these have even built remotely operated robots that are exploring the deepest parts of the ocean. They can find new life forms or even ancient lost treasure. Now it's time for your mission. Use your marine engineering skills to build a boat that can carry treasure. So first, use the engineering design process and identify the problem. You need to build a boat that can carry at least 10 coins without sinking. Next, you need to brainstorm. Look around for materials that you can use. You should use something that is waterproof, like foam or plastic or foil to build your boat. Now remember, you need to use a material that's not too heavy because remember how buoyancy works. You want the weight of your boat and the coins that are gonna be put in it to weigh less than the amount of water that your boat will displace. So after brainstorming, you wanna design, draw up a plan of how your boat will look and how it will work. Label the parts, the materials that you use, then build it. Now it's time to test. To test your boat, first get an adult's permission to use a container, a sink, or a bathtub and fill it with some water. Then place your boat in the water and carefully add one coin at a time until you get to 10 coins. If your boat does not take on any water and does not sink, You've succeeded. Now on to the next mission. For this next mission, you will need to design and build a sail to attach to your boat to be able to move it across the container that you used before. You'll again use the engineering design process to come up with a design for your sail to add to your boat. You'll need to brainstorm what materials to use for the mast that will hold up your sail. It can be a stick, a straw, or even rolled up paper. Then what are you going to use for your sail material? What size is it gonna be? What shape will it be? And then you're going to drop your design and build it. Now remember, based on the materials that you use, this is going to add some weight to your boat, but you wanna make sure that the weight of your boat, the treasure, and the sail that you add still weighs less than the amount of water that you'll be displacing in order for it to float. The next thing that you're going to do after you build your sailboat is to make sure that it's stable. You don't want it to fall over when you put it into the water. So you may have to adjust the design of your boat to make sure that it's stable and does not tip over. Now it's time to test your pirate ship. Put your boat with the coins in it at the edge of the container that you were using before. Now you need to add the force of wind. You can blow air onto your sail to move it across, or you can set up a fan to be the force of wind. Time how long it takes for your sailboat to reach the other end of the container. Can you change this time? Can you make it go faster by changing the shape or size of your sail? All right, engineers. Don't forget to share your design. Please post pictures or videos on our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter using the hashtag STEM Space at Home and tag us. We can't wait to see your pirate ships delivering treasure soon. And I'm sure some will say, That's got to be the best pirate I've ever seen. So it would seem.